everybody. <laughs> How are you doing? Uh, welcome to our lovely uh, live stream AMA. And this time I'm basically focusing 100% on Freelab. Um, really, there is so many questions that I received and um, also like what really uh, prompted me to do this stream. There was a post um, by um, um, a website I really love called Cinedi. You know, they bring like great news and camera reviews and stuff and I follow them and, and they were um, really cool and have you know written a nice article about Freelab. Um, and then, you know, in the comments, uh, there was people like, oh, how do I download? How do I do this? How do I do that? And I was like, okay, listen, I think it's a really moment for us to do this, you know, to actually, you know, release a, um, a, a, a tutorial about it. Um, so this is exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to, you know, try to give you like an overview of everything you need to know. You know, this, all of this is going to be like in separate videos as well. But also I want to give you a chance um, to ask me any questions as well. And this is really why these live streams are really good. So I want to welcome you all. Uh, hello, Rohit. Uh, good to see you. And Joao. Hello, Joao. <laughs> Just say hi and where you're from. And uh, yeah, let's uh, basically crack on with this. So I want to give you a little um, overview to what we're going to be uh, learning today or what I'm going to be showing you today. So first of all, um, we're going to go and see how to download the software. Actually, you know, I thought this is pretty straightforward, but it seems to be that some of you don't quite, you know, know how to do it. So I'm really going to do step by step how to do it. And then I'm also going to show you how to activate it. So then I'm going to go and show you how to use it inside the Premiere. Um, then I'm going to show you how to use it inside the Da Vinci. And then I'm going to show you how to treat several different camera formats. And also even what you can do with Freelab, use um, log encoding from cameras that you don't know which one they are. And so it's very interesting. And then I'm going to show you how you then expand it by using X01 files. And the next thing that I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how you can build your own X01 files as well, because that's really when it gets interesting. That's really when it gets exciting, when you go like, okay, I'm not just kind of, you know, using some presets. I'm not just color managing. I'm basically, you know, developing a look as well. Okay, so any any questions or anything? I'm going to be looking at um, at the uh, uh, chat. Hey, we have Luis from Orlando. Good to see you. And Rohit from India. Good to see you as well, guys. Hey, Nathaniel. <laughs> Good to see you. Nathaniel is here in LA and Chad, hey man, good to see you, Adriano, very good, Brazil is in the house, always good to see Brazil, very good, Janos, oh my man, is my, my Janos from Germany, good to see you Janos, very good, and then we have a how to make Latin look designer in S-Log to S-Log, very good, you know, that's a look designer question, but I can show you how to do that. Uh, and Dave Satin is with us. Oh my God, good to see you, Dave. And Peter, hello, Peter. Good to see you as well. William, William, my God, Francesco. Okay, so, you know, very good, good to see you. Some of my, you know, favorite people. Um, nice to see you all here. Um, it's always good to, to know that you guys are following what we're doing. Uh, we, it's actually lots of new stuff happening. You know, we are in the middle of, you know, the version three. Like, you know, it's, it's going really well. I'm so excited. But, you know, let's now fake, basically focus on, 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 on Freelab story. Uh, hey, Phil is here as well. Brilliant, brilliant, guys. Thank you. Thank you all for joining. I really, really love it. You know, it's always good to see you here. All right, so um, basically let me uh, now go to, um, you know, how to really get Color Lab, right? Sorry, Free Lab. Um, so we're going to do that first. So you go to website uh, colorlab.ai and uh, forward slash Free Lab, as simple as that, or you can just go to our menu product, select Free Lab. And then here you scroll down, all the way down, and then here you have two options, one's for Da Vinci and one's for Premiere. And as you can see, it's working for both. It's working for Windows and for Mac OS. And then you just click on this button here, okay? And this is where some people get really confused and I really need to explain you what's really happening here. Okay, so, so basically let me just give you a little explanation so you understand. 
Freelab, as the name says, it's free software, okay? So it's free and it's always going to stay free. It will never cost anything. You're always going to be able to use Freelab for free, okay? But you have to license it, okay? And the reason why you have to license it is because each copy of Freelab needs a serial number. Okay, and you go like, well, why does it need serial number? Why do I need to activate it? So now I'm going to explain to you, like right now, you don't necessarily see the benefit of that, but we have plans with Freelab, okay? And the reason, by the way, why Freelab is called Freelab is not because it's free. It's actually because it frees you, it, it liberates you, right? It's a, you see, look at my t-shirt, look, it says Color Lab, Free Lab, right? It's basically supposed to free you up from a tedious tasks of color management, of doing stuff that is actually slowing you down and finding lookup tables, downloading and applying them and so on. It's supposed to basically free your color. And that is really why we have bigger plans than just what you see today and why we need a serial number. Because when we have a serial number, we, for example, can decide who can open an XO one who can't open an XO one If you connect, for example, Freelab to the cloud, we're going to be able to communicate with you directly because you have a serial number attached to it and we know exactly what copy or what instance of Freelab is basically being communicating at the moment with our cloud software, okay? So this is really what is important. You have to understand that, that you know, Freelab is, has got much more coming and as a part of that, you really need to have a serial number. You will never have to pay for it. You, we don't ask you for credit card. It just comes through. It's a zero dollars per year. You place your order and off you go. So once you have placed your order, you're going to end up on this page. Okay, and on this page, you'll see where you can download it. So here, download, you see, it says a download, it expires never, so it's clearly not possible to expire. And it says Freelab for Adobe Mac OS, or Freelab for Adobe for Windows, whatever your operating system, you click there, you download, and then you double click and you install. Okay, what you're going to need is you're going to need also a little bit down. It says related subscriptions, right? And it says here, here is a subscription that's active and here is a serial number. Just go ahead and click and copy this serial number. Okay, so once you have completed your installation, just go follow through it. Yes, yes, and next, you know, it's a really super easy. Once you have completed that, you come to your software. I'm using now at the moment Premiere, but it's exactly the same. Right, so let's say this is my clip here, and now what I want to do is I want to go into effects, and I want to type here free, and it will give you straight away free lab. Okay, then you click on this free lab, and you drag it, and you drop it onto your clip. And it immediately going to see something now. What is going to happen to you is that you're going to get a watermark that says, hey, get your free license. Okay, so what you then do is then you go click here on effects controls, and then here in effects controls, you'll have here options for free lab, right? At the top, you have profiles. This is where you select your camera. Okay, and this is the magic of Freelab. I'm going to show you this in a minute. But what you need to do first is you need to go scroll down all the way and it says license. Okay, license. And then you click on license. Okay, and then what you do is you want to hear right mouse click. Okay, you must right mouse click and then you'll have a paste option to paste your serial number. This is a security feature that is, you know, connected with our licensing system that does not allow command copy because, you know, that could lead potentially to some security issues. I don't know. They decided to how to this works. So in any case, you have to right mouse click and paste your code and then you just go and you click activate, activate. Okay. And that's basically what's going to happen. All right. Don't click on get free license because that's going to take you to actually, you know, buy software and stuff like this, you know. Activate offline is if your machine is not connected to the internet and it's possible that your machine is not connected to the internet because, you know, you might be working in a security kind of company that doesn't allow machines to go outside or you're somewhere in the field offline. I don't know. Your computer doesn't have internet connection. Could be any reason, right? Then you have a way how you can activate it offline right? You basically will then download a little file, upload it file to our website, and then you'll get an activation code. It's a little bit more tedious to do that, but you do this only once, 
okay this is all you need to do just do it only only once and your software is going to be good to go okay so i i know it's not like i just download and run there is an extra step you need to do you need to copy and activate but the way how color management works is that it requires some level of control okay and it's not random so we can't just have random plugins doing random things if we are really to give you what we are promising to give you which is control over your image okay so that's a basically you know what why why you're gonna need to just you know first time you install just go through this process okay right very good so uh, says and uh, one user says freelab is very useful to share the grade yes i would like to add freelab to our university edit suites 15 and eventually add look designer for my classes and partly we can't get multiple copies serial numbers under one admin account ah that's an interesting question willem yes um I, willem why don't you just email us and i'm going to explain you how to do that there is actually a workaround, you know, or like what we do, this is a called an enterprise account you have to have. So we have enterprise accounts and we are going to be able, we have to just put together for you a custom order. So you have to tell me that, or can I please have on this email address so many free labs and then we will send you the, the basically, you know, how to fulfill that order. You can't do this through the website. This is a feature that we have for our enterprise clients you know, who want hundreds of licenses, but you know, if you want 10, 15, no problem, you know, we can, we can totally do this for you. Okay. All right. So now I'm in, and then what I want to do now is, 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 is like, so look, you know, so basically this was a shot and then I just basically tell it, Hey, this is an Ari log C and I click an Ari log C and this is the beauty of it. Look, no other, and I mean, no other color management system on planet earth right now gives you more options than this. Okay, there is nothing out there that can give you more different options than this. And what's very important to, for you to understand, all you have to do is just do one click. Okay, you don't have to worry, you know, what's gamma, gamut, tonal mapping, uh, gamut mapping, is it forward or reverse or OTF, none of that. Okay, you don't have to do any of that. You just basically select what is the camera format that you're using and there is a list of cameras that is long as an arm and it's getting longer like you know yesterday i was visiting a client who told me hey but where is phantom absolutely right we're going to put phantom in okay you know and for example you know i have iphone iphone dolby hdr i have iphone sdr i have you know z cam i mean you're kidding me look at the list right you know this is really like you know you know z log 2 right then the kinelog you know this is really like you know what what separates you know free lab or, or this color management you know from color lab than other systems is because we are not limited to any manufacturers we really work with everybody and we support every single camera so you don't have to do it in reality what would have to happen is you would have to have a lot just for rec 709 for any one of these cameras somewhere stored on your hard drive you know taking space on drive god knows if you're ever going to need to use it and then you know you will have to find this lot make sure check it is it the right lot is it maybe not you know there is always this doubt you know where did i get the lot from lot from i downloaded it from here but was this correct lot not you know now you don't have to worry about it you know somebody else has taken care of it is giving you the full overview of every possible camera that you can get and you can then start working straight away what's really cool is we are super optimized you use less cycles using free lab than using lumetri controls and it's because you know lumetri is actually has got a, quite a few controls has got a, quite a few settings so it does need more cycles of course and we have really tried to minimize and to say no like let's make it just as optimum as possible so that people never slow down and that's exactly what's happening okay so for example here i have a shot right and i go and say okay fine you know i'm i'm i i, I asked my client what did you shoot it with and they say oh it's shot with a sony camera right oh excellent then i go here and i just go and click free lab all right profiles and instead of ari we're going to go and select sony s log 3 s gamut 3 dot cine right boom i put that and 
instantly I get accurate color so I can support and work with Sony straight away okay here I have a ca I have a log shot and I ask my client what is this shot and they tell me I don't know Dado I really don't know I, I we downloaded it from you know this website called um, uh, you know shot deck shot no what's it called um, art grid okay so I have a look and it clearly looks like a log image, right? Because there is nothing here below kind of, you know, normally we call it 100, it says here 10, but okay. So, right, so so, so there is nothing here, it's empty. So I know, aha, uh -huh, this is a log, must be log. Okay, so what you do then when you have, you know, log shots that you don't really know what they are. And you know what, it's actually very common, believe it or not, that sometimes shots just come your way. So no problem, you take a free lab, you drop a free lab on that, Okay, and instead of, you know, letting Freelab choose its default setting, which is Arilog C, which is, you know, internal color space that Freelab is using, you scroll down and you look for log generic. Look, it's here under L, log generic, right? And you click on that. And what that gives you, it basically analyzes the content of your shot and it gives you optimum transform that is going to, change your log signal into a rec 709 okay and then you know if you if you ever want to kind of go and say well i actually want to work a little bit more with you know like adjust this image or something like that right what you can do is you know you can then just go um, into your lumetry control because you know you can combine lumetry and free lab this is absolutely perfectly okay to do you can for example go into your color wheels and you can bring a little bit these highlights in my case i have to do that because my highlights are a little bit too strong right okay and i can lift a little bit my shadow because in my case my shadow is a little bit too crushed right and I can now basically get like a, a beautiful looking, you know, nice contrasty, you know, with gorgeous color image with just, you know, making a few adjustments with the slider because all heavy lifting, right? All heavy lifting was done by color lab. Now, which is very important for one thing to do to, to understand, which is what this is following. The correct order of processing is not how I have at the moment free lab and then Lumetri. The correct order of processing is to take free lab and put it after Lumetri, right? So you always have first Lumetri control, then free lab, okay? Very important. Your color management, your output transform, and we're going to learn this. We have a very, you know, soon a, a color management class coming just for Premiere users, okay? It's going, it, you, you always put your DRT, your output transform as last. Okay, so now what you're doing is you have your controls much better and much easier. So your Lumetri always has to be in front. So you see now I'm basically, you know, working in much more elegant way. There is no clipping or crushing or anything like that. And that's a really like, you know, an advantage, you know, again, like, you know, you're just adding advanced color management to your pipeline with a free plugin. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. Okay, this is exactly what we wanted to do. Now, here is another interesting camera. It's called RED, you know, and, and, and you know, like many of you kind of have got, you know, sometimes issues like, you know, how can I make RED good look good and this and that. So, you know, look, Freelab has got a couple of options for you. Let me show you. So, like, first of all, what you can do is you can just say, okay, give me a, uh, give me a profile, you know, my, my, my RED profile. So let me do that. So I'm going to go RED, WHITE, GAMUT. It's IPP2, isn't it? RED IPP2, RED, WHITE, GAMUT. This is like what everybody's shooting with or you hope they do. And you click on that and boom, you get the right level of exposure because the mid grade's pretty low and everything's looking really good. Okay. However, sometimes these colors in RED are very vivid, very strong, right? So what we also give you an option as well is something that I developed when working with cinematographers who always ask me the same thing. I like red, but can you make this, this, and this adjustment, which I can do. And there is this DV, that of Valentic setting for red, RVG, red, white, gamut, log 3G10, and you click on that. What that does, it gives me a little bit more control over red. It doesn't put me in a corner that I have to just use this you know, native red color. Now I have a little bit, an image which gives me 
more opportunity to go and tweak it and make something really interesting with it. And when I start using Exo once, you'll see how beautifully this is working. But most importantly, what it solves, it solves these gamut issues and problems that we sometimes get when things just get clipping a little bit like a brake lights and, you know, police blue lights when they look a little bit like, you know, cra like, you know, as they're distorting. This is the first problem that you're going to solve. So this is a little extra thing that, that you can do with red. Also, I've just visited, you know, a colleague of mine, a really big colorist, who ends up using, and I'm talking, this is a f movie that's like, you know, more than $200 million budget, yet he's grading red with log generic mode like this. And I was like, wait, but why do you do this? And he says, well, I'm a colorist, right? And I want to be able to make this adjustment. So what he does effectively, he goes and says, well, you know, He's not using Adobe for doing that, you know, so by the way, he's using, you know, um, another software. Um, but but I'm just, I just moved Lumetri to be on top. But what you basically he's able to do is that he's able then to control, you know, himself a look because the log generic gives you enough freedom to basically design your own look, right? So it gives you a lot of freedom for that. Um, so, you know, I can just basically add a little bit more color myself if I want to do this, right? If I want to like, um, uh, basically, you know, um, uh, 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 do like some stuff, you know, mm, highlight tint, maybe a little bit into the warms, you know, I actually, you know, now you see, I'm able to kind of, you know, gray this image with much more sensitivity because log generic is not you know like a so heavy and um and this is a, like another creative trick you know i probably would imagine that you know this is also something that many um you know uh, da vinci users are going to be able to use but you see i have i have really crafted very quickly very easily using just these free tools available to me a nice looking image you know it looks really beautiful like a little bit lumetri and a free lab bang, I'm good to go. I'm, 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 I'm basically, you know, in a ballpark. And that was always a problem we had in the, in Premiere. You know, there was, it was, it was always very difficult and cumbersome to come up with something that, you know, you want just images to look okay. And you want them to, you know, you don't want them so sometimes to completely finish them. You just want to start editing with images that don't look flat, that look really, really nice. And, 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 and that's really what we're trying to give you here. We're trying to really help you with that. Okay, let me just quickly go now to uh, my chat and see what's happening there. Um, I've been uh, getting my clients to install it on their Premiere Pro system so I don't have to use Adobe Scholar Management. <laughs> it's a great trick, actually. <laughs> I have to tell you what, you know, this week I have been onboarding every day. Every day I had a w at least one call with large media companies who are all editing on Adobe Premiere and who are all switching to using, you know, Freelab, Colorlab, Look Designer. Just simply because they are like, this is solving all our issues that we have at the moment, right? We want to like, you know, balance cameras. We want to just basically be able to do it very quickly and this and that. By the way, I want to show you something which is in one really, really big client of ours based in, in, in Germany. What they do is following. It's very interesting. So, um, so for example, look what they do. They, I'm going to just share my screen so you can see very interesting because you just reminded me on that. Let me show you what they do. They say, okay, Dada, we get now footage, you know, into Premiere and we want to start editing, right? And, um, and, and, but you know, can we apply a look to material without rendering? Can we actually do so that we can just open raw camera files, apply a look, and we start editing with the graded material straight away, but in Premiere? And I was like, of, of course, we looked into it and this is what you do. And this is really cool. I actually didn't even know you can do this, you know, but look at this. You go to your timeline, right? You go to your, to your, to your, let's say this is the, the imagine, now, I'm going to do it with one clip, but you can select hundreds of clips and do this at hundreds of clips at, with hundreds of clips at the same time, right? So I'm going to select one clip. Then you take a free lab and you don't drop it on your timeline. 
you actually drop it here. You drop it into your bin, on top of your clips on the bin. So what this becomes now, it becomes an effect that is on top of the bin. Like So, so now you see automatically this, uh, I think it's called clip effect. And what, is, what happens now is basically, you see, it has this little red line underneath. That means it's a clip effect. Right, and now I'm able to actually, you know, anytime I cut this clip onto my timeline, it has effect applied to it already. So you can start editing straight away. So this is also a really, really cool feature. And you, if you look at it like now, like um, you know, uh, you 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 have to actually go into your into your you know um, editing you know your source files you know for this. So you can't really think edit it in um, in the uh, in inside you know like a, just a normal effects controls right. But it is absolutely amazing, you know, that we can actually just do this and we can just, you know, you know, do this, you know, like this. I think it's it's here. Uh, there is another uh, panel which says um, source clips or, or clips that, you, that allow you to do this. Anyway, I'll show you this later. This is going to be a separate tutorial because I'm just going to combine this together with Frame.io and you'll see, guys, it's an amazing, amazing workflow, you know, that you can do. And this guy now is not anymore flat. It has a, you know, log image and you can start working with it instantly. So it's a really, really like, you know, useful, useful, useful way of how to do it. Okay, let me just go and see any more questions. Um, in Freelab, is Freelab natively Gamma 2.4? It's 2.4, Adam. Yes, it's it's a Rec 709 Gamma. So it's it's actually, to be 100% precise, it's 235, but it's 2.4, yeah. Um, how to make show that's in look designer S log to S log? Um, I'm, you know, this is a look designer um, question, you know, but, but basically, Adam, uh, I'm sorry, a deep music, I'll just give you like a quick answer. You make a look like any way you want, and you just go and select as your input. Oh, we don't have an S log as an output, isn't it? I understand. All right, all right, all right. Okay, we, we'll, we'll add an S log as an output. Let me just write this down. We'll give you an S log as an output. And then you're going to be able to do it. I see what your problem is. No problem. We'll, we'll make the change and, and we'll update it and you'll have it. Peter says, where do you find in Resolve, um, you know, uh, uh, how to use? Uh, Peter, what is it? Where do you find how to use? How to use Freelab, yeah? I see, I see. If, uh, Peter, we we are we are actually, you know, making like, a, you know, marketing and training videos for Freelab. You know, we've been, we've been like, you know, just, you know, in a little bit of a beta phase now where we've been just, you know, getting clients to use it, understand what they like, what they don't like, what we're improving. And we are releasing a point release with some improvements and videos at the same time. So just so you know, so basically we, we kind of didn't want to go and make all the videos straight away, knowing that we potentially will make some changes to the product, which is what we're going to do. We wanted really people to use it first enough for us to be able to understand, okay, what is there, you know, to be improved. So it, it's, it's happening in, in early next week, there will be loads of videos coming out. Zhao says, do you stop developing software for Final Cut? It seems that all ad, uh, oh, that after all, Apple has <laughs> killed it. <laughs> no, actually, Joe, I have not stopped it. The reason why I didn't develop, you know, it for Final Cut is because I um, I was expecting the iPad version to be released, and with that, that there were going to be some significant changes. And I just didn't want to do it twice. You know, I don't want to do like in a development just to find out that Apple's changed everything because they have to have a compatibility now between Final Cut on um, iPad and Final Cut on desktop. And when this is happening, you know, what you do as a company, you kind of just wait a little bit and you just go and say, okay, fine, wait, let's go and do it now. So when we make a free lab for Final Cut, it will be a, an, a, a one that is going to work for both. Now, there is a real, you know, challenge that we have here, and you hear me out. When you're on an iPad, and I really feel that, you know, this whole iPad thing is, is, a, is, a, is a great development. I super, you know, support it. I, I think, you know, eventually it's going to be easier and easier to, you know, edit stuff on an iPad. But, but what happens right now is you have a very little options to how you're going to load your X01's files and save X01's files, right? So we are, when we have a, like a, a cloud connection for X01 files, 
that's when you're also going to see plugin for Final Cut because it's going to be super easy on an iPad just to click and pick a look from your cloud and have it downloaded automatically instead of like, you know, fiddling by copying, downloading, importing, you know, which is so difficult right now. Um, and I want, you know, people to have a great user experience rather than, you know, some bad user experience. And, and when we develop it, we'll make it so that it works. So I have, I, I have no intention to drop Final Cut. I'm just waiting for them to make the turn, which they just obviously did. And we're now following them again, basically. That's basically what's happening. Um, uh, uh, why to, ah, why to use it uh, with Resolve? Oh, very good question. This is a Peter. Peter says why to use it with Resolve. Let me show you this, Peter. Um, does HoloLab have issues with Resolve 18.5 beta? When I send it back to Resolve, the colors are nothing. Oh, interesting. No, we have been using it, Peter. Actually, just yesterday was grading a job with it. Um, and it worked absolutely fine. But you know what? You know, we can totally look into it and see what's happening. Peter, just ping me and I'll, 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 I'll link up with you and see there could be some setting or something like that that might be happening, you know, like in color management or something like that, that, you know, uh, but I'm totally going to investigate and see, you know, where this is. But, you know, it's been working actually, you know, fine for me. Um, okay, now I want to show you like now um, just a few things, you know, in Resolve as well, you know, how, you know, you can use it and why would you use it? Okay, now look, if you're a look designer user, which many, you know, of our customers are, you probably have all of those uh, tools. But, you know, if you're not, like if you're basically, let's say, you know, you, you don't want to like um, just, you know, um, you want to basically use, you know, um, a free lab because it's a free plugin and you want to get the power of it. The reason why you want to use it is because it has all this amazing color management and it's just so much simpler, you know, for you to say, all right, this is some generic log, so it's log generic footage and you get like, you know, this stuff to look pretty nice, like out of the box like this, right? Instead, what you can do is you could say, well, I don't want to use this. I want to use color space transform, right? And, and this is okay. And many people say, Oh my God, why would I ever use Freel because I have a color space transform? And here is the answer why. Look at this. I mean, I teach, you know, people like, you know, I, it takes me four weeks to teach people how to master fully color management for everybody to understand what each one of these settings means. And each one of these settings has to be exact and right for you to get this particular transform. And there is a only limited amount of, you know, I mean, there's lots of options, but none of the kind of, you know, exotic options. Everything is like, you know, pretty much in a very high end pro cameras and you can't really manage anything like iPhone. You can't manage anything like, you know, you know, cameras that you don't know what log it is. You can't manage, you know, uh, cameras that might be a little bit competitive, you know, with black magic cameras and so on and so on and so on. So there is a lot of cameras that are not supported. And, you know, now with, with basically Freelab or, you know, what most people, because, you know, DaVinci is used primarily by colorists, they're actually using the look designer version because it's just absolutely full blown. It gives you all management in, in an amazing way. Um, but, you know, for many people, you know, they don't really say, I don't want to be color scientist. I don't want to know, you know, this whole color management is so complicated. Can I just have something that I can just do in one click? Now you can, and that's why you would want to use it in DaVinci, right? Okay, please, sir, update the profile S log and black magic log. Oh, okay, we'll do that as well. No problem. I'll do a black magic log as well. Now it's chance. Now it's your chance, um, uh, to guys, to to say any other logs that you want as an output. I'm happy to listen to you and put anything else. <laughs> Uh, Nathaniel says, is it better to work with Freelab directly applied to clips with an adjustment layer in Premiere? Oh, very good question, Nathaniel. It's, it's the same effect in terms of the processing is exactly the same. Um, now, when you put it as an adjustment layer, you're going to have the same effect on everything. When you put it on a clip, you can actually go in and, and make a set different setting from clip to clip. Maybe you have, you know, one camera source and other ones, other camera source, or you maybe want to use a little bit of, um, of um, you know, adjustment on clip to clip. So, so either way, basically, like, you know, when you're going clip a clip, you have a little bit more granular setting on for each clip than just an adjustment layer who is going to convert everything. So it's basically, you know, it, uh, uh, thing. 
Um, the Venice row um, is not going to happen until version three. You know, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's we are we are we are rebuilding the whole media engine, and we are putting all these new row files into new media engine. And this is the same thing with Ari row four thirty five. The new version of Ari row and Venice row are not going to be available in Color Lab AI until um, version three. Uh, and that's planned for September. So we're 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 afraid, you know, we're we had to put hold on this because we had to rebuild the, the media engine completely, and and that takes some time. So once this is finished, we'll be all good to go. Okay, but this is just concerning, you know, if you have a RGB files transcoded media, not a raw media, you can use all these formats. We are supporting, you know, ARRI and everything, no problem at all, right? Okie dokie. So basically, this was just a quick explanation to, you know, how to use it with DaVinci and why to use it with DaVinci. It's super, you know, easy, fast color management for all these cameras that you might not have in DaVinci at the moment supported. And it doesn't cost anything. Again, as I said, it's a great little thing, you know, for you just to start working very quickly. All right. So now I want to basically um, talk to you about XO1 files because this is really where it gets interesting. Okay, so so let me explain to you a little bit what this is, right? So for example, okay, let me actually go into Premiere, you know, because it works the same, but I like to use Premiere more because it kind of gives me, you know, a little bit more understanding, like right? or, or like it shows me, it shows, you know, it's easier for people to understand it because these are the stuff that people in Premiere never had. So I kind of quite like to show it like this. So let's say I have this shot, all right? And I want to give it a look. Okay, so what you can do, there is actually a set of XO1s, but you know, we have um, been, you know, given a feedback by a, a user I love a lot, like he's one of the kind of pro colorists that works here in Hollywood, and she said to me, I, 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 I really out of all of your X and ones, I like two. Why don't you make them like this, 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 and this? And I was like, oh my God, this is a great <laughs> actually point. So we are, we are going to do that. So we are making and changing this. But what happens is, is like, you know, there is a basically set of, of, of different X and ones, right? And, and, and what you do is, 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 for example, I can just click on one of them, you know, and I just open it. And it gives me, for example, in this case, gave me a Kodak film print emulation look, right? So this is where I mean, like, I completely replace all these LUTs. And this is my aim. I'm, my aim is to give you as many of, you know, these XO1s already pre-made so that you guys don't have to do it. But there is a major advantage in these XO1s in comparison to the LUTs. Because look, I have now here a Sony camera right? And I can now go on Sony camera and I can say, hey, import an X01. And I'm going to use this same X01 that I used for a, for a previous shot that was on Alexa. And I open it and it works. Okay. And the reason why it works is because this is not a lot. X01 is a parametric file format. Okay. And I haven't been sharing my screen, so you were not able to see. Oh my God. Damn it. That's amazing data. Well done. All right. Go back. Go back. I'm going back. <laughs> so it's terrible. Okay, 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 okay. So I pressed the button, but it did not necessarily, you know, give me the idea All right, that I haven't changed. So look, let's do it again. So this is an ARRI file. All right. And here I have a free lab and it says no X01 loaded. Then I click on import an X01. Okay. Then I import this X01 and I have a list of X01s. I'm going to give you this list. All right, and then you're basically going to say 2393 film print emulation, FP, right? I click on that and I say open and bang, I have this look. So now this shot is not just a standard 709, it's going through a film print emulation. All right, and now if I go here, right, this is a Sony look, right? And I'm going to remove this as well, so you see that as well, right? So it says no, oh, sorry, this was wrong. All right, so I'm now in Sony look and I say, okay, remove this shot and I go do again, import X01, I import it and I select the same X01, the same look, even though I'm on a completely different camera, boom, it gives me that look for that particular camera. And I can go here to this shot, you know, this is a shot that we didn't know, you know, what file format it is, right? And I can do the same, 
and I can say, okay, fine, give me an, an XO1, right? And it's going to go and give me this XO1. I open it and boom, I now have this particular shot emulating the film stock. But I think it's because it's all blue, you kind of, you can't really see this red happening, right? So, so you see, maybe this is a good place I can show you like how this works. So look, I can just drop in a free lab, right? And then I go into effects controls and then I go here into profiles and I say import XO1s, right? And then I basically can say, oh, give me an Ilford look. Boom, it's a, it's a black and white. Then I can say, hey, no, give me that film emulation look. Okay, hey, there is a film emulation look. Or I can say, oh, I'm not interested in film. Uh, give me some Cinetone looks, like for example, and a South look, how is that look? Oh, it's a very nice and warm, right? And so on. So you see, basically, you, you, you are able now to, to, to take these looks and apply them to any shot, uh, any camera, really. And it's still going to be real time, okay? And it's still going to work perfectly. And you can still, you know, end up using a little bit of your Lumetri controls if you want to, right? And you can say, well, you know, let me just actually go and, and bring this one down just a little bit. I need to actually change the order. I need to change the order so that my Lumetri has to sit in front. So now it's going to work. All right, so now I can say in Lumetri, all right, give me just a little bit my, my highlights just to have to come down a little bit, maybe a little bit my gamma comes down. And now I have something that is, you know, looking more filmic, right? And look at it, it's like a full-blown film emulation, you know, in real time for free. Okay, and that's and that's a kind of the beauty of these workflows, right? They are not any more limited. Or oh, let's try here this shot. I mean, this is an interesting shot, right? It's red that we tweaked with a separate, with a special input format, you know, for it. Remember, we used log generic instead of the net state native log. And then what I'm going to say is going to say amp import an XO1, and let's put this to be an orange. And then bang, it looks like this. But maybe I'm going to try and say, no, I don't think I like this one. Let's go and apply a film look. So I'm going to go now into my film looks and I'm going to go and say film emulation and give me this film print emulation from 93 Kodak. And bang, I have that. And now I see the shot is just looking awesome, right? It's proper filmic feel. So this is like, you know, where, where you benefit from this, right? You, 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 and, and we will be committed to releasing these XO1s. And you will be able to, you know, if you're just a free user, just, you know, download them and have a library of great looks for you. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. I want to make, I, uh, I want to make IDT. Should I use Ace and Transform or Look Designer RE2 Ace CCT? I'm getting better results in Look Designer RE2 Ace CCT. Um, so... Yes, so our our um, our um, transforms are following ARI guidelines, really. Like you know, so you are gonna get results that are closer to what ARI thinks it's correct. So, and I also think that this looks better. So I kind of agree with you that that some aces kind of transforms are looking a little bit funny, um, and especially their seven or nine is looking really harsh sometimes. So you know, there are ways. You know we're 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 you know we're um, you know teach that you know like you know how you can combine you know our color science with with aces you know you're still in aces but you're modifying you know you're building your own custom IDTs and stuff like this so yeah it's totally possible to do that um, and by the way I mean just as a side note for all of you guys you know if you ever want to you know work in aces now in premiere and somebody sends you a clip that is in aces right it's somebody sends you aces cct clip by the way this is you can't do linear aces in premiere at the moment you can't it's not it's just a limitation of their Im image processing engine so you have to use aces cct and basically there you go there is an aces cct setting here and you would be able to import cct files into into your workflow and so be able to work this is particularly cool for after effects artists who kind of you know have to make some work on files that are aces cct and they just want to preview them so it's a really really easy way for them to do it 
Um, okay, so then Peter says, Freelab is reading camera type and you don't have to dig for each. No, you, it doesn't. For that, you have to use Colorlab, Peter. It's free software, so we can't give everything away for free, right? So you have to really like tell it what camera it is. If you want to automate camera, you have to use Colorlab. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, yeah, you can apply any look. And, and now it comes to a really interesting part. Is okay. All right, so now... You know, I get you. Not everybody wants to use presets, and I'm 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 this type. I kind of get excited with preset once, and then second time I'm already like, ah, I'm bored with the preset. I want to build my own look, right? So let me show you actually how you do that. And this is really, you know, kind of an interesting, you know, workflow that I hope all of you guys are really going to embrace. Um, let me just import the file, you know, so that I can um, show you better, you know, like, so, so for example, so let's say you have a shot and you want to give it a look, right? And, um, and uh, let me see camera match this one I'm going to use and I'm going to use this Ari shot, right? Okay, great. All right, so it kind of, you know, automatically recognized, hey, I'm, I'm Ari log C, right? And I want to now give it a look. All right, so what I do is I go back into look design, right? And then in look design, I always start with a transform curve. So like I start going through transform curves. This is Colorlab AI for those of you who are, haven't seen it before. This is a software called Colorlab AI that has a panel which is called look designer. And this panel is a user interface for same image processing engine and plugins called look designer that are available for both Da Vinci and Adobe Premiere. So this same thing you can do inside the plugin is just that here is a little bit more, um, you know, it's cooler because it, I have the UI, right? So I can then go through first, I always suggest you start, and this is a, like a look building tool. It's a tool designed to build your look. And the principle of this look design is based on decades long research on how we were building looks and creating looks in times of analog cinema. Okay? And you can, it has two tabs. It has this, you know, analog tab, which is more kind of 80s and 90s when we were already doing some transforms, you know, using telecine machines. And this is purely emulating photochemical process. Okay, and okay, and you go like, well, why am we doing this? I mean, we are shooting digitally, and the reason why is very simple. The reason the way film looks the way it does, it's not random. It's not because chemicals look like that or emulsions look like that. It is because people made them look like that, and the reason why they made them look like that is because they spend a lot of time asking and analyzing what do humans perceive it as good looking what kind of images are, are 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 considered to look good okay and if we are building something from scratch why would we start with something that's completely unknown if someone has spent decades understanding the type of aesthetic that most viewers find appealing they say well this type of images we like and the reason why still today even though we shoot on all these digital cameras most films look like they were shot on film is because that aesthetic is just you know is 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 good it's aesthetic it's pleasing people like it people like to watch you know images that look like as if they're shot on film but again don't worry this is nothing to do with film as a medium it's just to do with the aesthetic that was developed when developing film so what we're doing here is we are basically recreating the process of how cinematographers back in the day before there was anything digital how they used to build looks okay and the first thing you know like you know that you would start is you would try to select a a a, 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 a stock right that would give you a certain transform transfer function and for example i can just go and let's say for example start with this fk0 that's for me. And you see what it does. It basically takes and gives me a little bit of a kind of contrast. I have this also function called crunch. It's very specific. You know, this is something that we have because when we do film transfer, transfer from negative to print, there's a little air gap and this air gap, you know, makes means that we have to like, you know, just pump a little bit more light and that has this effect. So it's not a curve. It's just an effect of, of, of you know, this light dispersion because of the air gap. 
but it has a great effect. You see that it kind of gives you a little like a you know bite to an image, which is always very nice. It's always nice to do it. There is a, if I was to if you were to coming from sound, it would mean like oh I'm applying a compressor, an analog compressor, a tube compressor to my image. I want to just round off those peaks basically. That's what it's going to do. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a print stock. Okay, let's do the print stock. So I can select, and I mean, look at the list of print stocks you have. It's crazy, right? So maybe I want to do this print. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm, you get the idea. And now I'm going to maybe print it to a Fuji stock. Oh, so Agfa. Why, why not? Let's do it on Agfa. And I'm also going to limit the gamut to be true to film print emulation. So here I'm going to select FPE, which kind of says B accurate for film print emulation okay maybe I can change a little bit temperature here right like this right and I can make it a little warmer but then my client says I want to have a little bit more teal in the shadow so no problem you go then to your primary setting the analog setting then you go into lift you click on lift then you find your teal right and you just move a little bit teal and bang you get a little bit teal in your shadow so you know it's really like kind of made for designing not for grading because you do this like a really once and you want to have this precision now look the moment i switch back to grade i have saved this x01 right and now i can right mouse click on it okay and i can say export this x01 please all right so now i'm going to export it and i'm going to call it my cool film look okay and i'll put it into my downloads for example why not and now i do that now look i go back into my premiere I, I'm, I'm gonna go back to this shot and then in this shot i'm gonna say hey import now this new x01 that i just down created my cool film look right i'll open that and bang i have exactly the same look inside premiere right and look at it it just looks like absolutely amazing now the same thing right you can do is also like apply the same look to other files like so for example this is shot on ari but it doesn't matter i can still take my cool film look and apply to it and it's going to work absolutely perfectly look it's going to give me this cool filmic you know um, emulation and and you know what is this high end it couldn't be higher end than this if I'll be honest with you like because this amount of effort you know this tool you know for look design has been developed for more than a decade this is not something we came up just like overnight this was a long process where we were working with some of the most discerning cinematographers you know where I was hired to develop looks for them and to be honest I developed this tool primarily for me so that I can design cool looks for my clients and I'm just giving it to you now all to actually go and make these looks. So it's 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 it it served me really really well. Like I've 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 made some, you know, amazing amazing, you know, show lots with this tool and you know, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't be able to kind of, you know, make your clients feel super happy by being able to, you know, do this stuff. Anyway, so this is kind of, you know, what what you know the possibilities are you know with an xo one file um you know let me go now uh quickly and see some of your questions you know so let's see what's happening there um where was i uh, da, 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 da. Uh, peter da, ha, okay joao when i import in free lab uh, uh, uh on davinci in xo one created in look designer the color correction is not applied it just keeps the IDT correct. So, uh, so, so you have to, Joao. You have to uh, se set the the uh, IDT manually. So, uh, X01 is IDT independent. So you have to tell, you know, I'm using this IDT. You know, we got nothing to do with IDTs and oddities. This is X01 as looks are completely independent from your source or your target. They are built inside a scene referred color space. This is why they are such a high precision. And this is why, you know, they look so good. So you have to tell it what's in it, what's in it. But we're going to listen to you. And if you guys think like, no, it would be really cool that when I'm transferring an X01, I also can specify an IDT. We can make the change. It's not a big change. We can totally do that. Um, uh, all right, all right. So the next question is, uh, is the look designer panel in ColorLab uh, literally the exact thing? 
correct. It's literally exacting at them. There is no difference. It's the same piece of code running underneath. We share the same code base between plugins and Color Lab AI. This is something that we made a big change, you know, now recently, and this is what's happening. So there is nothing different, exactly. Uh, talking about the look designer, please, when you have a chance, don't forget to teach us about test image feature. Oh, my God, yes, you ask for that. My God, of course, test image feature. Uh, yes, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. I remember now. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, we're going to do that. Maybe next time, you know, next Friday. Why don't we do that? Perfect. I think it's a great progression as well. I'm teaching you now a little bit how to build looks. Now I'm going to teach you once you build look, how you make sure that this look is not going to break your image and it's going to work on variety of materials. And that's what test images are for. That's a great suggestion. Thank you very much, um, Adriano. Thank you very much. Peter says, uh, Stream Deck Plus, can you map the Look Designer four knobs to functions in Look Designer? And, um, and you can you can do it in um, in Color Lab. I mapped um, all of the things in Color Lab. I don't think you can do it without that special tool that helps you type in certain area or something like that. So Peter, I I I, I have to tell you that you know the 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 better Stream Deck integration is inside Colab as a software. Excellent, <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Okay, guys. So um, let me know if any questions. Let me just double check if I'm you know how to install. I showed you how to activate it. I showed you how to use it in Premiere. How to use it in DaVinci. Different cameras. I showed you how to use XO1s and how to make your XO1. So we seem to have gone through everything I have planned for today. Um, please feel free to ask me any questions or anything that you might have. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm here open for any more questions. Otherwise, um, I want to thank you for being an amazing audience. Thank you for tuning in. Um, it's always great to catch up like this. Um, and um, yeah, stay tuned for uh, like uh, some more interesting stuff. You know, we'll be, we'll be like expanding the features of XO1. We really are on a mission to make color management as easy as possible. And don't forget a really important thing. One thing that separates 3D LUTs and XO1, and which is the most important thing that separates 3D LUTs and XO1, is that XO1s are created to be driven by an AI engine. And the better the AI gets, the more you're going to be able to do with it. What I'm trying to tell you is that soon, in not such a far future, you will be able to prompt text to what look you want and the AI will be able to generate an XO1. And I want to just whet your appetite to what is going to be possible in not such a distant future. And I think we're living in a, such an exciting time, in a, such an amazing place in, 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 in the, the, what we are able to do and how you know we are able to express ourselves creatively is just absolutely unbelievable and I'm really looking forward to bringing all that innovation to you so on that note I want to thank you all again and stay tuned for you know much more things coming for those of you who are into more like a interesting AI works. I want to just mention at the end that we did recently a seminar on how to use Midjourney and Colab AI. It's absolutely fascinating <laughs> what you can do with it. It's crazy. I'm teaching you how to prompt and how to control uh, Midjourney to design your looks and how you transfer those looks onto your material how you building custom looks effectively using Midjourney. The seminar has already been happened, but the recording is available on our website and it's called Advanced AI for Colorists. There is going to be more of those Advanced AI Colorist seminars. So I encourage you, if you're interested, to start following them. Um, and um, yeah, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's just another example to how AI is changing our workflow. So thank you all, guys. Ah, Joe, you want a t-shirt? Joe, ping me with your address and I'll post you one. No problem at all. <laughs> yes. And the fact that you know that it's a great escape is why you're going to get it. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much, everybody. You know, enjoy uh, your weekend, uh, you know, and 
there is going to be a long weekend for us. Monday is bank holiday and, you know, hope you do something beautiful and exciting. And I see you all uh, yeah, next Friday. Why not? Let's do an, another AMA next Friday. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care. <laughs> Take care and bye-bye.